Welcome back to season two of the Salt and Shadows podcast. We're bringing you shorter episodes this season with tangible tips for diving into the darker seasons. We're headed into fall and winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, and we know this can be a challenging time for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. That's right. We are taking it slower and we are creating our content with more intention to support you in keeping the energetic change with the seasons of going at a slower inward pace. We'll be consulting both our oracle and tarot cards, as well as leaning into our intuitive elemental channeling in order to bring these messages to you today. And don't forget, we are now offering Salt and Shadows sessions, where we have collaborated to create a ritual that puts you at the center of the magic, bridging your outer world with your inner spirit. And now it is time to trace the salt and embrace the shadow. Hi, Diana. Hey, Courtney. Welcome back to episode two of season two. We were talking about seasonal change last episode. In this episode, we are going to be diving into seasonal depression, which I also just want to say right away, we're both really excited about this episode, especially because we really haven't talked much about this. Like usually we'll, we'll, Diana pulled some cards. She's told me that they are beautiful cards. And I said, let's wait to talk about it on record, (laughs) on the record, uh, while we're (laughs) recording. And I'm just so excited. This just feels like it's going to flow really well. And uh, I don't know about you because I haven't asked you yet, but, um, seasonal depression is something that I grew up with. (laughs) It's been with me like my entire life. Um, and then when I first started getting into fitness, um, many years ago, uh, I thought that I had like found the cure and I was like, I, one fall, I remember that I like, didn't remember the last time that I was depressed and I was like, Whoa, like, this is wild that I, that I'm not feeling this. And like, of course now I realize like, it's never just one thing. There are so many factors and it's great to learn how to support yourself. But, um, Yeah. I'm no stranger to seasonal depression. I'm assuming you agreed to do this episode topic because you are not either. Do you want to say more? (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. I, as a child, I would get very frustrated with just how much it rained in this area and how much that kept me from being able to really be outside. I mean, I, spent my childhood in a home that was surrounded by fields, horse fields, and I would spend a lot of time out there. And those horse fields would flood because of all the rain that we get. So I really couldn't be out there even if I wanted to be. And so like, there was a lot of like, it felt very restrictive. Plus my, my home life was not very safe either. So being stuck inside was not a place that felt like it was positive or healthy at all. Of course, I couldn't really recognize those things at that time as that, but right. yeah, I can, I can follow the trail back through my life and see how all of those things like really took a toll on how this season is framed for me. Mm. That's so interesting that you take it all the way back to childhood because now <laughs> I'm thinking, and I mean, like I said, I didn't really even think about the seasons, as I had said in last episode, that I didn't even think about the seasons really growing up. But I really remember like the seasonal depression more so like through, I would say my adolescence, like coming into like 13, 14. And like, that is like where I really realized, like, I don't know, you know, it's like going, that's when you're transitioning into high school and those kinds of things. Yeah, for sure. We all have our own experiences. Say that again. I said, we all have our own experiences. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you can trace it back so far. Um, I'm really curious about what your cards are saying and I'm going to start shuffling mine as, as you maybe, are you ready to share right off the bat? Okay. Yeah. I'm totally down with that. What decks are we doing today? So I brought in the Wild Unknown Tarot deck, which is the card I'm going to start with. Mm, I love this one by Kim Kranz, right? Yes. 
And um, already when we're, when we're thinking about um, seasonal change and seasonal depression, it really does bring up a mental state and when you're in the swords of the tarot, you're in the air element, which is the mental state. It's your thoughts, your ideas, your anxieties, your fears, your stress. And when you're in the 10 of swords, you're truly in a place where you have brought yourself as far as you possibly can go with. For those of the, for those who cannot see it, that is the card she's holding up, the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords. Yes, I apologize. Thank you for filling that in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the imagery is quite uncomfortable, but this is what it can feel like we're, when we are in that place of depressive thoughts, where we feel like there's no direction we can go in that feels comforting or encouraging or happy or light. It's just everywhere we look just feels dark. And I really felt like that was the perfect card to describe what that feels like. And also what I noticed in this card is you see an animal that has horns. They have this mental defensive system built into themselves where it was possibly blocking them. Their defenses were so built up to where it was so internalized. It's a part of their physicality, part of their psychology. And they literally couldn't see how they were using their defenses to avoid getting to this place possibly softening and that's when my oracle card came in and the oracle card comes from the threads of fate deck and the card is called compassion I'm going to say a plug here if you do want to see what these cards look like and you're interested in the imagery we both are we're, this video is available live on our youtube channels which can be found via our instagram link and in bio yes thank you for mentioning that that is gorgeous. It's gold. It's shimmering. It almost has like, almost like a stormy backdrop. It looks like. Yeah. It's, What's it's the called the shadow Oracle deck. So all oh. of the backgrounds are shadow. Wow. Yeah. But look at this. First of all, let this word sink in. Compassion. Compassion. So much of the time we carry within ourselves and on ourselves more than we are meant to carry through the darker months. Mm. And this, this becomes a weight that blocks us. It becomes something that becomes almost a structure that we form throughout the holidays, throughout these times where we keep ourselves busy. This is where we're missing. This is what we are missing is compassion. And that's not to, that's not to delete or um, like take away any valid mental health experiences, but there's always a place where compassion can be used no matter where you are. Absolutely. And Especially with depression. I just want to say that yes. like, it really is in my experience, uh, depression and is this really deep pull, this longing, this reaching out of yourself for yourself in some way, shape or form. And that compassion and that, that uh, I, I feel the word like grace, maybe that doesn't land quite right with you, but that just that gentleness of mm -hmm. yourself, like coming back to that and yeah. al allowing yourself to settle more into this pain. Like it's, we're not denying the pain. We're not taking away from it. It's allowing yourself to be understanding that you're in it. Yeah. I think something that was really beautiful in the transition of the cards also is in the first card, we're in the, the most extreme version of our thoughts that mm. we could possibly be in. And when so you're savvy. usually in, <laughs> yes. And when you're in that space, you are just in your head. It's really hard to get out of your head. And in this place, something that I love is there's also antlers. Yeah. 
that was the first thing that that stuck out to me is the imagery yeah. between the two. Can you hold them both up next to each other? Yeah. Yeah. Because this can, is it okay? Do you mind if I explain a little? Yeah. Or, go ahead. Go, do ahead. You you go me, ahead. Do you want me to go into it and then you can follow through? Yes. Okay. So what I love about that is you're coming from this, this mon- mental realm of being really trapped in your thoughts to the point of being able to go no further. You can't grow any further. You can't expand. Really, you feel stuck in all of your choices. And then we come into compassion and suddenly there's life. There's literally life growing from around your defenses. Mm -hmm. You're implementing your shadow. Yeah, you're bringing yourself back into your body and connecting back to the earth. And that's bringing those defenses into a grounded place. Mm -hmm. You can still have defenses. You can still have boundaries, which are an even healthier form of defending yourself. In fact, we highly encourage that. Absolutely. But you are, instead of only staying in your mental realm and staying in a place of stress and fear and obligation, you're now grounded into the earth and your body and you're recognizing your needs and you're making space for that. And that is implementing into something that is expanding and softening and allowing growth for you. Something that I just, I, this, this speak of boundaries is really deeply resonating with me. Like I feel it coming forward. Like it doesn't feel like even something that we recommend. It feels like something that is required. Like we're coming into a deep season. It's fall. It's like, it's a stressful season in society. It's a darker season. Like we're dealing with seasonal depression and just like understanding how to support yourself requires boundaries and boundaries is a lesson that has really just bopped me over the head in the last couple of years. I felt so restricted and like such a bitch with the ideas of having boundaries. And I had to realize that boundaries is a structure, like realizing that it can be a big, wide open, beautiful field, but you still have a fence around it. It's, it's, it's keeping you safe. I, I heard a metaphor of boundaries being like, like a good cauldron, you know, like to be able to cook up a, a spell, like the boundaries within your cauldron. Like, I don't know. It just, yeah, it I feels like a beautiful. very big piece when it comes to compassion, when it comes to protecting your mental state. Yeah, absolutely. Protection, I think is such a big part of that too, because it's not just the ability to be defensive, which Honestly, I really see that as an energy of our time as well, especially now where we're feeling really caught up in the energy of what's happening around us and the media and everything. Like it's bringing us into a place of feeling defensive. And if we do not find compassion, if we don't find the time to give ourselves grace, like you said earlier, like it will be really hard to find ourselves to connect to not be taken to this place like this is how we find our way out of that yes I just love this imagery of the two of them next to each other and I especially just yeah without that compassion and that understanding it it really does lead to like and without boundaries and without the structure it leads to that I'm dead it leads to that ten of swords and I, yeah, this imagery, the first image, if whether you can see it or not, do you mind holding them up for anyone watching? I just, no, not at all. I love them. Yeah, the first one, it looks like a buffalo to me, but as you're saying, a horned creature of some kind, it has, it's like a dark shadow. It's like coming out of a shadow. There's all of these swords around it. That's like the stabby part that reminds me. And then the eyes are black and there's a sword going straight through both eyes. And it's just like, I'm dead. Like I, like you've, you, it, it feels like you're fucking dead. You can't do anything else. The stress is too much. You've taken on too much. Like no matter where you're at, that is how it feels. And 
you are still breathing. And as you come to that breath and you ground back into yourself, you find your boundaries, you find the compassion, you find the ways to support yourself. We start to slowly transition into this compassion. Can you hold up that other card? Yeah. And that, I just like, these eyes are still, they're still completely solid, but they're now gold. And as Diana said, you find this growth that's coming off of the antlers. And it just, mm-hmm. as you learn to deepen into these tools, you can take yourself from this really depressed, like super stressed state and start to transition into making that, finding a strength within that. And making it, making that depth and that depression, your strength also, because it doesn't have to own you. It can be a part of who you are. It is a part of who you are. If anybody, if you are a person that experiences depression, a lot of times you feel like it's something you live with your entire life and that it probably isn't going away, but you have, you can find, you have tools within yourself. You can cultivate tools. You can create tools to be able to flourish, to be able to ground in, to be able to find this, like a, a, a silver, a gold lining, we'll say, since this card is shimmering with gold and we love our gold hint hues. To find the abundance in the shadow. Yes. I mean, if, if you can see the image on the card, not only is there growing parts around the antlers, and this is a deer skull, by the way. So this brings in grace mm. as well. The imagery of deer and their gentleness and their compassion. Deer represents so, like mother energy, which is very yeah. nurturing and caring and compassionate. Mm-hmm. And brings it into that goddess, that empress mode, especially with the growth around it. And if you can see the imagery of the card, there's actually ornaments around the antlers decorating them. Yes. They are shimmering. They have taken the things that felt heavy and felt like they were going to take them down and they've made them into beautiful medicine that now adorns. And as we're speaking, I drew the card from the liminal postcards deck that this is a spell and it just shows um, like the number three everywhere on a building, on the street, on a bullet uh, billboard, um, on an airplane. Did you say the number three? Yeah, triple three. That's the number of the empress that we just, I just mentioned too. Uh Yeah, (laughs) I I love that. What this this one really is standing out for me in this moment is especially recognizing this imagery and the symbolism and how same, same, but different as we're always (laughs) saying. That's another card that comes up in this liminal space deck. And Mm -hmm. imagery is so important because it helps you to be able to use your imagination which help which helps you to allow and allows you to dream it's so important to be able to tap into that and and slowly but surely as you come back into yourself you open yourself up to being able to see these signs and symbols from the universe and you see enough of these fucking symbols and you realize oh these aren't just like magical coincidences they aren't just fucking coincidences they aren't just synchronicities there's something happening here. And in the space that we are in, it's a fucking spell. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a nudge from the universe. You are where yeah. you are. Meant to be. Your dark can be your light. It is a way that the universe communicates through. Yeah, for sure. That feels really beautiful. Do you want to start yeah. going into tangible tips? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good thing. I think one of my, I'm going to start shuffling my tarot deck as we're speaking to this. Okay. Um, when I think about seasonal depression and just being kind of sad and dissociated from myself and maybe like un, not in touch with myself, not in touch with my life. Yeah, we're saying like, you know, set boundaries and get in like, come back to yourself and all of this stuff. But one of my biggest tools is recognizing who shows up for you in your life, who loves you, who wants to be there for you and reach out. Do not do this alone. Do not sit and wallow in your depressive state. Do not believe the lie that your mind is telling you that you are a burden because you know, if one of your fucking best friends reached out to you and was like, 
Hey, I'm just really not feeling that great. You're not going to be like, Oh my God, again, bitch. No, like this is too heavy. <laughs> Only love and light. Like, no, that's, that's not, it's not, what, that's not what true friends do. Yeah. I almost feel that, um, something that we're trying to really bring into our consciousness is a slowing down with the seasons. Mm. And I like to say to, to keep it low key, which I think fe- like feels into what you're saying about having trusted people around you, like really be choosy about who you spend time with, but make sure you do spend time with them. Don't disconnect. Don't isolate, you know, make life simpler so that you can prioritize the things that truly support you during this time. Yeah. And I had a question kind of coming up in my mind. I'm like, what do you do when you don't have those people around you in your life? Because we have both experienced that. And oftentimes when, especially when you start to embark on this path and you're shifting your ways, you're shifting your paradigm, you're shifting your way of thinking, you suddenly realize like, oh shit, I don't know anybody that is like on the same level as me. And then that's just like a whole other spiral. Right. Do you have any thoughts around that? I would say it's definitely worth taking some time with on an individual basis. Um, Just really encouraging you to connect with um, perhaps media like this. (laughs) <laughs> something that feels encouraging and supportive and is going in the direction you want to be in. And that then, really yeah, that just really, and then start building your toolbox of the things that you do not depend on others to give to you. You have them and it's in your inventory to support yourself so that your support is not always dependent on others, especially as you're building that community and it can't be dependent on others. You really need to be able to seek within you to build that support. It's funny how it's like, there's that duality. It's the both. And it's like, yeah, you have to look within yourself and you have to reach out and find community in that I love that you're saying that like looking into media, that is what social, I feel like is the best thing about social media and the internet in this day and age is our ability to be able to connect with people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And you have to dig a little bit. You have to do a little research. You have to take a little time to find something that really feels like you can connect with it, but it's out there for sure. I also would say, and Maybe this isn't true for you, but I am not you, Diana, but you, the listener, I am, but I am going to set an invitation to really think, I have a feeling that there is somewhere, someone in your life that does show up for you, at least one person and to just show some appreciation for that person and allow them to show up for you, even if it's hard even if it feels like the hardest thing in the world and you're the only one you can trust, just start open up in the smallest ways you feel available to, as long as you feel safe. Because I have to reiterate it. Here's the thing. Again, the people that love you, that care about you, that are showing up for you, they want the best for you and they can, they can hold the space. They can understand that you're going through something like we are human. You don't feel good all the time. The people that are like, don't have time for that. Aren't your people. And sometimes that is the most painful thing to realize that the people that have been there for you, your whole, your whole fucking life, all of a sudden, like you just realize they aren't the people you thought they were. They couldn't, they can't hold the space that you want them to. I'm still realizing that to this day. And it is so painful. Yeah. But recognizing who is there for you and recognizing your own needs and sending your own boundaries like you, this, you can get through this, you can move through this and out the other side is this beautiful, compassionate, bright gold shining card that allows you to blossom into who you are, to be grounded and to feel good, to know who you are, to be able to navigate the hard shit to be able to have the resources and the tools to reach out and say, 
it's not a good day. The gold of the card also makes me think of the, um, the art where they fill the cracks in the pottery with gold instead of calling it broken. Like it makes, makes me like, think of that, like your darkness, your cracks, the places that you feel broken. Yeah. They're just places of wisdom waiting for you to find their treasure. Kintsugi. I hope I'm not butchering that too much, but it's a Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces back together with gold. Kintsugi. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've ever actually heard somebody speak the word, but I knew I had read about it. So Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, (laughs) I hope I'm not butchering it too much, but I might be. Thank you for looking it up. Yeah. You're welcome. I, just, I would also, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Please. I would also share that going into this season where we are losing sunlight and, and really acknowledging the season as well, as we spoke about in the last episode with um, just going into the seasonal change, there is a natural underlying grief that we are feeling because we are moving away from that, that time of great abundance and life and warmth, and we're moving into darkness. So it's really something that we should be taking the time to allow ourselves to feel because there is a spiritual underlying grief that we feel when we start moving into the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. And just take time to acknowledge it. I love how you keep bringing it back to this slowing down of the season, because it like, that is just so important. If we're talking about trying to live with the seasons more and honor the seasons of where we're at, it's so important to recognize that this is a slowing down. It's also a celebratory season, not just because of the holidays, but because traditionally living with the earth where things are coming to harvest right now, we're, we're, we're canning food. We're preparing ourselves for a winter. We are, I want to learn how to can, by the way, I've been talking to my grandma about that. (laughs) Same, (laughs) same. Just, just allowing ourselves to reap our abundance, to recognize that we are abundant creatures and you're not lacking. You're not broken. Right. I drew, go ahead. (laughs) I keep doing this. I keep having these thoughts. I Just love that it. something that's coming into my consciousness too, and is a part of my story is that my story has been my story for so long that it's really hard for me to, and, and I'm just forming this, this awareness that you can be healed and not just healing you can start progressing and moving forward past what you healed from and exist in that place and start creating who you are past that place. And I was really staying in this place of focusing on healing so much that I wasn't really acting out of places within me that I've already healed and they're ready to expand and they're ready to continue creating. So just bring that into your consciousness as well. And this cultivating the tools and the support systems that is that showing up for yourself is what gets in there and rewires the system and the neurological pathways in the brain that allows you to actually create a different story and expand your awareness to even recognize that you are a healed person and that you can shift onto this new track and operate from that space. But you have to show up. You have to be willing to do the work. You have to commit to this. I always say in my definition of self-care that it is available to anyone, anyone. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your class or your privileges or all of this, but it matters that you want it for yourself. Yes. And that's not to take away from all of the amazing support that we can seek out at all. That's just saying you need to meet it halfway. You have to want it. Yeah, absolutely. I had a few more tangible things that I was wondering if I could just like shout out like a list. Please do. 
Okay. Just a few things, and please do not believe I do all of this 24 seven, but they are things that I have really tried to stay consistent with when I, when I can and have helped me. Mm -hmm. So light therapy, Ooh. getting a sunlight if possible, bringing that in, hey, putting yes, it on your desk. Like hitting your face. This is so beautiful right now. Yes. Light therapy. This Got is it. not going to be here forever. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking it. Especially um, in the season, right? Yes, exactly. So I also supplement vitamin D, keeping up with the, the basic nourishment of your body to sustain you when there are less times of energy with the sun. Mm. And let me see, try to incorporate, you don't have to get rid of coffee, but try to incorporate more herbal tea into your routine. So you are getting some supplemental support for your immune system, for your, um, I want to say like your stress levels and things like that. If you start drinking tea and, and having herbal support, that'll really help as well to soothe your system because you don't want to just coffee out and dehydrate and bring your nervous system into a place of anxiety and just keep it there. It's not going to help you. That's, those are yeah. such big, deep pillars, especially to what I'm always talking to as the self-care lifestyle. And I really hear you saying like, yeah, coming back to whole foods, to, to being of the yes. earth, like using herbs, go, like switching, yeah, switching up more to herbal teas. I love this. I love this. Possibly eat more seasonally. Yeah. Like the, the root vegetables and the... <laughs> Yeah. Just allowing it. Like if, if that's your thing, <laughs> I know yeah. it's not everybody can eat root vegetables and things like that. Yes. But. And if crystals are your thing, I brought in big mama rose quartz tonight for our discussion. And that would give you beautiful support at that time as well to give yourself compassion and softness and grace. And even if you don't know anything about crystals, just picking up a crystal, like the, you don't have to know anything. They call you like you like intuitive, just trust that whatever one you like, that you think is pretty, that looks cool, that you, that maybe you do get a feeling from move towards it. Rose quartz is an amazing, amazing crystal to work with. I'm hold, I'm personally holding this awesome one that a friend got me this year. It's called, it's titanium quartz. Yeah. That's beautiful the traveling one. It comes with me when I travel. I almost love that too, because it's, it looks like it's, it started as a smoky quartz, which is like a shadowy color mm -hmm. and yeah. it was, and it was gilded, which yeah. makes me think, it makes me think of this card. Wow. Okay. Do you have more tips? Cause I have a question as we end this episode. Let me see. Let me see. Um, a few little things. Um, allow your body more rest because along with the slowing down of all of our systems, we need more rest because we are getting less energy and we are staying, we're having to keep ourselves warm because it's colder, all of those things. So really allow yourself more rest. I gotta that's say, going I, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> that's okay. And then, oh, allowing yourself to rest, but stay active with the movement that you love. Mm. That's pretty. So you're still moving your body, but not in a stressful way. That's like really taking too much out of you. I would even, I'm going to plug in rest, 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 babes out there listening. You have to rest. Yes. Like if movement comes easier to you and you want to move more than you want to rest, this is not the season for that. You need to rest. There is so much science and research and psychology behind how important sleep is. And I mean, I will give a fucking shameless shout out to my ex who prioritized his sleep like no one else I've ever known. And it changed my life. It is so important to make sure that you are able to rest and we're living in a society where rest is becoming a lot. Um, like we we're so stressed out and we are so go, go, go and, and fast paced that we are, we're coming to a pinnacle point where our nervous systems are literally physically unable to rest. Have you ever tried to rest and your mind is just racing and you feel really anxious and you just don't even know how to do it? 
if that is okay, that is normal. And notice that and start to cultivate ways to allow yourself to feel more comfortable in a resting state. It is vital mm-hmm. to your well being. There is nothing around this. I don't want to fucking hear anybody say again, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I, you, you, if you, yeah. then, go, then fucking. <laughs> I was going to say, you could just die and go sleep because you're not going to be able to live without your sleep, but I didn't mean to sound so mean about it. So I love you. I love you. And also (laughs) I think we have been running on a society that values masculine energy, which is always an energy of moving and progression. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are in a place where we are really starting to understand there needs to be a balance. Feminine energy needs to be allowed and there are seasons for it. And that is what we are moving into. It's the yin and the yang. We're coming out of a yang masculine energetic sun filled season. Mm -hmm. And we're going into the season of the goddess, the season of the witch, the time to go internal, to seek out our high priestess, to remember the wisdom we find within. And I just got to say, you should look up the song Season of the Witch by Donovan if you don't know it already. I'll look it up right after this. (laughs) May I tell you about this card? Yes, please. I want to know what you think as a plug at the end, final words, I drew the Nine of Cups. Wow. Yeah. What does that bring up for you, Diana? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so when we're in the nine, we're almost at the end. Of the we're journey in this... ace to 10. Yeah. And we're in a time where we take that pause on the threshold and we look behind us. Mm-hmm. And we recognize envisioning this, this path. Yeah. We recognize everything that's brought us to this place, everything we've been through, everything we have had to spill from our cups when our cups have been knocked over. And then also when we have filled our cups and we've come to a place where we've really learned to understand ourselves and the cups that we hold and how to keep them filled. And to step into that wisdom, we really need to understand ourselves and make the time to connect deeply into our intuition. This is what brings us into the psychic realm. When we understand ourselves so deeply that it just, begins happening around us because that's the synchronicity of the universe and how we're meant to be. We're just so disconnected from our own needs, from our own choices. But when we get to that place, we know what we need to sustain it. Beautiful. I really, I, I love mm, that imagery of that threshold and being towards the end of this path with the cups. And I really see this as like a guiding light. Like this is the light that you are headed towards at the end of the tunnel. Like, do you believe that it is possible for you to know how to support yourself? I'm not saying like, for me, I never ever thought that I could be in my depths of depression and feeling so awful and learn how to just be in that space and to breathe and to hold myself and to not Mm. necessarily need to change anything. Like, I feel like that is like the bittersweet bliss that you find within the nine of cups. Like we're not saying that it's going to be happy and butterflies and good all the time, but you can know how to be with yourself and support yourself. Right. Yeah. That's such a beautiful sum up. Mm. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode today. You can find yeah. Diana at safepassagetarot.net and on Instagram at safe underscore passage underscore tarot. <laughs> and you can find Courtney at selfcarecreature.com and Instagram at selfcarecreature. We highly 
suggest that if you enjoyed this episode or got anything out of it, would you please, please show your support by leaving us a review? We would so greatly appreciate that. Do not forget that you can book a session with us as well. This is just a very tiny little snippet. We go in, of course, to your personalization of, of anything you want to talk about. We bring that up with the cards. We consult the cards. And we're always circling back to say, how do we make this realistic, tangible, build tools for your unique individual life? Yes. We're here for you. Yes. And we'll be giving and you again in November. Yes. Yes. Shout out to our assistant, Leanne. She's making it happen for us. We appreciate We're so grateful. Yes. She's the one that edits these videos. She's the one that made it possible to be on YouTube, but we are just, we're, we feel like just, you know, solo folk out here trying our best. And we don't, she's like the only other person that works with us as part of our team. So we're really grateful to you, Leanne. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Take care y'all. Okay. See you next time.